Gray. This is a poem that I wrote many years ago. I studied ancient and Near Eastern history and I went to Egypt for the first time in the 80s. And maybe 10 years later I wrote this poem. Um, and it seemed a good one to have music playing behind. So we're going to give it a try and see what you think. Feedback is always welcome. A group of us from University College sailed down the Nile. This isn't the poem, this is my preamble. Sailed down the Nile on a felucca. We stayed on it for three days. And this is about one evening when we stopped at an island on the Nile. And it's called Felucca Night. Softly the old boat thudded to the shore, a starlit beach, an island on the Nile. Our boat nearby, single-masted, white sail swan. The old boat was no swan, a battered albatross. The turbaned, long-robed group leapt quickly down, and soon a twig fire glowed. Some glasses of hot chai were passed around, together with a makeshift hooker, an old tin can, and reed straw. Sitting apart was a boy who played a tune so haunting on his flute, a metal tube with holes cut in. He played to the night, crowded out with brilliant stars. Far away a dog barked, a mullah called to Allah, and from the boat close by, Yeah, so I'm, uh, I run events um, under the name of Azalea Arts, 
and uh, we, we look for poets and musicians and dancers and we basically put these uh, like variety shows on uh, which would be described sort of similar to sort of 1960s happenings. Um, we normally get artists come down, they do live paintings um, during during the evening show. Um, most of the time we have that at the uh, Vortex Jazz Club. I don't know if anybody's heard of, heard of that. It's in uh, Dunstan. Um, and then sometimes we do them, you know, bigger venues like 26 Lake Street and we'll have big fashion shows. But usually on a monthly basis we'll put these uh, variety shows on. So if anybody's interested, just come and chat to me afterwards. Um, this is a calendar I've been working towards for the last four years. It's called Phases of the Moon. So I've written poetry to represent each um, full moon. So there's nicknames for each full moon. I don't know if anybody knows this, but I didn't make it up. The Native Americans did. So like for an example, January would be wolf moon, February would be snow moon, and so on. So I wrote poetry to represent each one. Um, and then each of the poems were illustrated by different artists around London. So. Um, I'll recite one of these um, you know, at the end of my set. Um, the first one, um, the first poem I'm going to write, recite for you tonight, I haven't rec <laughs> recited it for a while, so hopefully you don't forget it. Um, here we go. One, uh, one second, actually. Yeah. Do you ever wish that you could live simultaneously, past, present, or through different realities? To live amongst those with a natural ability of comprehension, without drawn out conversation or commiseration, in a world that appreciates life's synchronicity and learns from its toxicity, into a place unknown where only by trusting you can be shown. Pay attention, lies your reflection. On your path, what shines back is nothing less than the energy that you attract. Yes, shown, I agree, facts are facts. But those born who can allow themselves to think abstract are the ones that make the most profound impact. So take some time to make some sense on what you want to say. Life's perplexing enough without an array, a display, and a belief that you don't believe in or one you can't convey. Thank you. Um, and then the next one I'm going to uh, recite for you is about a hawk. So, a few years ago, I was going through um, some life changes, let's say, and um, all of a sudden I started seeing hawks everywhere, and I found it really comforting, so it inspired me to write uh, a piece about it. So here we go. Hawk, that creature, way up high, could it be my spirit guide that swoops across the misty sky? Why now these birds have caught my eye? as I'm going through this changing time. I never saw this sight before, and now it's as if they mentor me, a magnetic force from way above, an angel in disguise. They descend upon my evanescence, protecting me and my existence. I don't know why I feel like prey, when they change and they make me feel okay. They willow billow, soar, then glide. They sail above and multiply. I wonder what this signifies. Could it be they heard my cry? Summer breeze hits my hair. The smell of pine trees fills the air. Summer blush fills me up like heaven's rush as I drift on by the riverside. Ivy twine caught my eye as the rays beam down to shine its light. Heaven sent a washed away rain holds me close, it sees my pain. I'm underneath the wings today. That walk, my angel, guides my way. It sounds like a story, but trust me, they're for me. Whenever I'm in need, they remind me that I'm not alone, and who I should trust most of all is me. <laughs> and um, the last one, I'm just going to recite one from my calendar. I'm selling them for ten pounds. Um, if anybody wants them, they're on the table. <laughs> they're gloss paper. They're quite good quality. Um, so, yeah. So these are some of the art pieces, all different, all, all friends of mine, all artists around London. Yeah, I'll do um, Hunter's Moon. Celine the Queen, goddess of the night, 
She riding high as a hunter tonight. Strong and brave as she guides each wave and watches over like a bird of prey. Stars burn in a sea of black velvet drapes like maps of diamond flakes as she stands alone in all her glory the earth bends its knee to the sheen's territory. In the mist of darkness between the stars, the autumn spirit of the lunar appears. Before autumn's full moon rises, first breeze, she still shines and leads. Pray on a crystal or the line of a silver beam, and listen to the whispers of the echoes from a siren's rain. Vibrations are shifting in the misty midnight air, expanding consciousness for those who can hear. With ease and joy, the celestial beauty is sustained and clear. For a hunter's moon's duty to appear, rise, then steer. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a big hand for Jay Evans, please. We've got a Polish poet, and we'll be glad to hear. Um, and, well, she's got so much on her CV that I won't have time to read it all. But um, she's a poet, a writer, an editor, a translator, and a publisher of literary waves. Part of English Pen, which is a poetry group for um, international poets, and Exiled Writers Inc. Known in many countries, holds the Polish Ministry of Culture Gloria Arts Medal for Merit to Culture, the Cross of Freedom and Solidarity, and the Joseph Conrad Literary Prize in, the, in America. She's also a 1980s activist for the Polish democratic and civil rights movement. She's also organised World Poetry Day for University College London. Woo! I've run out of breath. Come to the stage, Anna, and make sure you shout. There's a lot of background noise. Let's put this right close to you. Thank you, Anna. I feel a bit embarrassed at the moment. And my voice is very weak. Can you hear me? Yes? So I will be talking about definitely Christmas. So my two poems are only about Christmas theme. The first one is about Jupiter, a Christmas star of the sky. Jupiter. In the southern firmament, a star. Jupiter moving across the sky. This is a Christmas star. In an especially vibrant planet, easily visible in the evening sky over the next two weeks, as the bright planet Jupiter and Saturn come together, they need the grace, and what must be will be. Socrates dreams singing a carol. So the next one, based on real story, I, once I got a phone call from my friend from Poland. And it's about this discussion between us. Socrates doubt. He was a, he was a philosopher, and that's, that's very important. And one important thing is that there is a Polish uh, name in this, uh, in, this, in this poem, which is called Pierogi. I don't know if you know this word. Pierogi means dumplings. Socrates doubt. Has science abounded poetry? Socrates asked. He was frightened by his own thoughts. Are you coming for Christmas to Poland? He asked. Don't be afraid of almost a Russian chill. The English walk around in t-shirts despite the cold weather. I was in London and I saw it. He announced proudly. 
and he was laughing and throwing pierogi with sauerkraut into the pot. Thank you. His backing man, John Proctor, is also his brother-in-law, I think. And um, Rob, has, he's, he's been coming to these um, uh, not a bad word poetry events since we started last January, and he's, so he's a great supporter. And um, as I always tell people, he he made all the masks for the Phantom of the Opera. And he took a group of us last year to Phantom, and oh, it was absolutely brilliant. We had such a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. So, without further ado, and Rob is going to read some stuff, and he's and um, John is backing him on his acoustic guitar. Okay. Okay, I think that's all right. I didn't like to put lights on my head like Anna, I'm not quite as brave as that, but I did put some on my uh, stand. We hear the guitar, we want it. So this first one is very related to Christmas. It's my take on the 12 days of Christmas. It doesn't have any collie birds in it. It doesn't have a partridge in a pear tree or made of milky. Uh, it's not about objects at all. It's about being together and uh, trying to make that happen in this the way the world is. It goes like this. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sends a text. Wish we were together, I'm out counting my steps. On the second day of Christmas, my true love emailed me. I've got a download for you, it was their family tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love rang me up. We both made some tea, talked until an empty cup. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love messaged me. Let's play online chess. Checkmate as often is my fate. On the fifth day of Christmas, a video is attached. The family out jogging with a dog looks great fun. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love WhatsApped me. Can we chat or are you busy? Hmm, let's talk later when I'm free. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love didn't connect. I was worried, called up. It went to answer, I got in a fret. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love's phone is dead. Should I get on a plane? I'll leave it one more day in dread. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love's brother sends a text. All well, my sibling's phone is lost. Buying a new one, what a cost. On the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gives me a call. My new phone is so much fun. I've stretched my photo so I look tall. On the 11th day of Christmas, my true love sends a voice note. Let's fly, let's meet somewhere hot. Oh yes, I send back like a shot. On the 12th day of Christmas, our true love finally entwines. A new life is what we need to find face to face while in our prime. This one's a very short one without the guitar. I, I, I wrote this the other day while we were in the Friday Poetry Group with uh, Mary Duggan and Maxine. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just made something up. Uh, a guy called Arif, who's part of the group, brought a harmonica and started playing, and it, it just went from there. 
Um, it goes, Arif brings a harmonica, plays a tune that's music to the moon, Richard's on the spoons, Mary sings in Irish because she can, and I'm not speaking to Anne. So Halia and Max, I'm sure, are writing something fine. We'll wait to see what comes from our quick writing time, where this rhyme is mine on the Dugdale Mezzanine. That's it. Okay, um, my son's with me tonight, he's come over from Marseille to, to spend Christmas with his, with his beautiful young daughter Zola. Uh, we went to see him earlier on in the year, and uh, we, went, we flew down there, and um, when the plane was full, they drew a rather thin, flimsy blue curtain across the, uh, the, the seats. And the pilot announced that um, he welcomed uh, the World Alliance Partners. And that made me wonder, who are these people that sit behind the blue curtain? <laughs> the poem I wrote on the plane goes like this. What happens behind the blue curtain where the One World Alliance Partners sit? Do they feast on quail and caviar, sit in the finest white, and they massage to bliss? Is there room for them to kiss? Does a mirage of Abba play while they do the twist? On our side of the blue curtain, we sit cramped with aching knees in economy towards the back. We nibble on our savoury snack, coffee and biscuits extra if you please. For £7.50 they'll plant some trees, offset our carbon, what a tease. We're just going to do one more. This, uh, yeah, we're going to do, we'll do part half. Is that okay? Yeah. I was sat in the park in the summer and there was three boys sat opposite me and they, they had guitars in cases. I didn't talk to them but I did wonder what their story was and what it might be and I just made the story up because I didn't talk to them so I didn't know but I kind of liked it. <laughs> We sit on a bench waiting for fame, our instruments case like clams. We chat, hum and tap, hoping that music will come. An elder in a summer hat walks by, asks, what do you play? Oh, whatever, we're working on it. You know, we mumble in reply. The elder surprised us with a compelling response. Get off that seat, find a beat, make music, don't ponder, use your energy, make it sweet, focus so the mind don't wander. Play gigs with empty seats, pubs where no one cares, one day a few will tap their feet, then they'll bring their crew. You'll have an audience, just a few, in no time you'll be on the stage of a festival called Crumbs from the Table, and then with luck we'll begin your fable. The elder moved on towards the evening sun, quietly singing a happy song. Inspired, we stood as one, feeling that our journey had just begun. The three busketeers we call ourselves take to the streets and their options show. We play and play some more, get a break on Channel 4. The news, we are news. Our song goes on a digital trip, pence per play, millions of hits. Beyonce calls, please play at my party. Wow, it was wonderful, glamorous arty. Now called bus, that's with a double S. The crowds feel like a sweet caress. Glastonbury, the O2, the Albert Hall. From that bench to global reach. From beams in tins to finest things. We take in all the glory. Thinking of that elder and their story. We can, we can think. <laughs> 